Bless the Lord, O ye people of the world, Jews and Gentiles alike, because there are no more partition. So I welcome you to this broadcast. My name is Apostle Shada Mishe. As a messenger of the living God, I come to you and I ask the Holy Spirit to take over from here and run the show. Today, <clears throat> I am going to speak on God's office. Or if he is the head CEO, God have an office somewhere. And this office is in Mount Zion, as spoken by a number of scriptures. The first, the first scripture I will look at is in Exodus chapter 3, verse 12. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee. This is God speaking. And this shall be a token or a proof unto thee that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. Now, he's saying, when, when you come out of Egypt, you haven't come out yet, and when you come to this mountain to worship me, that will be your proof. The proof is after the fact that they came out of Egypt. Hence wise, the Lord is saying that I'm going to give you some instructions before ambush comes to fruition. Okay? And the place, the sign that I shall give you the place is Mount Zion. If we go to Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. He says, Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel, from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. All right. So we know that the Lord dwells in Mount Zion. Okay. So I guess he's going to make his office there, right? Another scripture <clears throat> that we could probably look at is Isaiah 60, verse 14. Verse 14 says, the sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee, bending unto thee, and all they that despised thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet, and they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Zion is the city of the living God. Now, the Lord said to me, <clears throat> if we go back to another scripture, just to make sure that what I am saying is scripturally correct. We can go back, we can go now to Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. And Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22 says, But ye shall come unto Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the innumerable company of angels. All right. The Lord said to me, Tell my people, the people of Israel and the ones who believe Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the one new man. Tell my people to make me an office under Mount Zion. 
It's interesting that he told me this about 14 years ago. I didn't know where he was going with it. Then he reminded me of what he said, and I was to say it. And I looked up um, the, the rail system. And the rail system, there's a light rail from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. It's finished now. He said to me, tell them to make me an office under the hill Mount Zion. Bring to it a light rail underground that the people of the world may come to me. The people of the world may come to me. Now, why are they coming? They are coming to by ambush or give a procurement for ambush. How much? 10% of their living or a tithe. For as long as they have been Christians, they have tithed, meaning gave a tenth of their income. The body of Christ has given or is expected to give a 10% of their income to the body of Christ, the church, the one that Jesus Christ himself. You see that guy up here? He's the one who started the church, okay? And he needs funds to do things, build buildings, feed people, and so on. This is where we give the tithe, the 10%. Now, um, <clears throat> the tithe, 10%, must go to the Lord. Now, you're going to say, but that's only for Christians. No. Galatians 3, 28 says there are no more Jews or Gentiles, no more slave or free, no more female or male, but we are one man, one new man in Jesus the Christ. Okay. Now, you see, for the rest of the world, the Christians have been paying the tithe or should have been. The rest of the world has gone free. Now, what is happening is that uh, the AIDS virus has infected or will infect all of us in due season. Whether we like it or not, that's the facts. And I, and I did explain that in other uh, videos. Now, there is only one product that can kill the virus and retroviruses, and it's called ambush. Hey, you look at it as I ambush cure AIDS for years now. This is my 17th year, and I ain't going anywhere because it's almost ready to come to fruition. So he says, when the ambush comes, that Israel is to make a railroad, a light rail to his office talking about the office of the living God. It should be built seven stories above ground and seven stories below ground. Now his office should be below ground. The walls of the office, the walls of the office, the ceiling and the floors should all be of white marble. Let me say that again. He wants a building built under Mount Zion and it should be seven stories above, seven stories below, and the walls should be of white marble on the walls, the floor, and the ceiling. All right, so we now have a building. We know where his, his office is. Now, his, at his office, all the world, all the world must go to his office to buy or procure ambush. He said to me, if, if you do not buy your ambush from Israel, so you must have a representative to go to Israel to buy your ambush. If you do not go to Israel but buy your ambush 
from a third country, that which you have bought will not work. Hey, he's the boss. He says it won't work. It won't work. He says, all must come to him. Then he will, what you buy from Israel will work. How does he want to be paid? He wants to be paid in gold. Okay, so a complainer said, Lord, what if they don't have any gold? He says, how about silver? Lord, what if they don't have silver? He says, whatever they have, bring to Israel 10% of their GDP, gross national product. Yes, you heard right. He told me gross national product. 10%. Bring that on. I said, Lord, what if they can't afford it? He said, all right, if they can't afford 10% this year, then you bring what you have this year and you owe the balance next year as according to the Leviticus, Levitical laws. So you will bring your 10%. <laughs> You will bring, <laughs> bring your 10%. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> you will bring your 10% to Israel. I'm laughing because the Lord reminds me. I, have to, I do not have it on my notes. He reminds me to tell you a story. The story is there was a, 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 an overseer. Jesus told this story those of you who do not read the Bible. There was an overseer who was mishandling his master's resources. So the master called him up to say, hey, you're going to be fired. Now make an account of what you have been doing and I'm going to fire you. So the servant goes to his master's um, people who owes him money and he said how much is it that you have on your books that you owe and the guy says I owe 80 tons of flour he says oh take your take quick take your take your book and mark off 80 and put it at 40 next one he says how much you owe my master he says I owe him 50 gallons of oil no Cross out the 50 and say 20 and so on. Jesus himself recommended that this servant had done well. I said, Lord, how you mean he done well? He said, yeah, because he has used the mammon, the money from this earth to buy himself time and energy. I said, well, Lord, how that going to help us? He says, I'm telling you now, Israel will get from the world 10%, plus or minus. It's negotiable as to what they can afford. He says, tell, the, is, tell Israel, when the money starts to come in, they are to buy. Use that money and buy from the Palestinians whatever land is there that they are crying for or holding for hey you're gonna get 10 percent of the world's wealth coming into israel you can afford now to use that money and if the palestinian had an acre of land and say he wanted a million for it give him two million he will gladly leave it there won't be any need to divide jerusalem because you have bought Jerusalem with unrighteous mammon so that true mammon can be hallelujah <laughs> can be endowed upon the earth I thank you very much for listening to me God bless you real good amen amen and amen <laughs> thank you Lord thank you Hallelujah.